Welcome back to another episode of Bee Fishing. Now what we're gonna do today is it's getting that time of year where we're about, everybody's getting ready for the pre-spawn. We gotta get ready for the pre-spawn. And of course, you're probably gonna to wanna to change out your line. But before you put your stuff up at the end of the, the season, uh, before it got winter, you probably cleaned off your reels. Maybe you used WD-40. There is an old saying that if you get WD-40 on your line, well, your line's toast. You gotta replace it. WD-40 will break down your line. So we are gonna put that to the test today. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have 14 pound mono, Berkeley Trilene. We're also gonna have 14 pound fluoro, Berkeley Vanish. And we're gonna have three strands of each. The first strand is gonna be our control. It's not gonna have anything done to it. We're just gonna cut, you know, six foot of each. We're gonna sit that to the side. Our second cut is going to be, I'm gonna spray some WD-40 on it and just leave it, just sit it to the side as if you were spraying your reel and it got, you know, splash over. The third is going to, it's gonna be the, the what can it stand test. And I'm gonna put it in a little cup for five days, doing nothing but soaking in that cup. And we're gonna see what happens. We're gonna see if number one, WD-40 weakens the line you should change out your fishing line at the beginning of every season, but is it necessary if you accidentally splashed WD-40 on your line? Let's do it. All right, so the other part of this is this trilene, the mono, I've got in light green just so we don't get them confused. We know which one's each. This is gonna be our control for the mono. We're just gonna sit this to the side and it's gonna be out on the table for a week. Let's go ahead and cut our other two of the mono just so we have them. All right, so there's our mono done. Now let's get this fluoro cut. All right, so we've got all three cut. Let's just bring those back over. I'm gonna tie these on to some carabiners just so we can keep up with them. Um, it's what I'm gonna use to hang them. So what we're gonna do is mono is gonna get our deeper colors. Fluoro is gonna get some pastels. And I think we're gonna go with red and pink that are gonna be dipped in the cup um, of WD-40. And the blue and green are just gonna be sprayed. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. We've got our monos. We have our fluorocarbons. These are gonna be dipped for five days. These are gonna be sprayed and sapped for five days. Our controls are actually up here on the different colors. Remember, anything with a pastel means that it is fluorocarbon so this is our mono control this is our fluoro control they're gonna sit they're not gonna be sprayed we're actually gonna move them over here so let's start spraying now, I don't know if y'all can see this line but my goal here is actually to not spray the knot at all because I don't want any type of lubricant in the knot I don't want that knot slipping um, so here we go we're just gonna spray this on this fluoro Make sure we get it nice and wet. Now this is again an exaggerated case because you'd really be just spraying the reel and you'd get a little splash over. But I want to get it on that line where it just sits. Okay, so we've got the little cup. We're gonna fill with WD-40. We're gonna put the line in. Um, and here we go. So here's our fluoro. I'm gonna make sure it gets nice and in the bottom. I just wanna make sure I've got real good contact with at least some pieces in the bottom. In goes our mono. Again, as long as I've got some pieces that are gonna be covered, so we're gonna try to fill this cup up. And here we go. I would say that line is covered. Let me first explain what WD-40 is. So WD-40, the, the WD stands for water displacement, and it was their 40th try um, of making it. So. A lot of people use it to prevent rust because it doesn't allow water in. So you put it in your reel, it makes sense. When the water gets in, it displaces it so it doesn't sit on any ball bearings and rust them. Um, a lot of the ball bearings nowadays really are kind of foolproof unless you're in salt water anyway. Uh, but that's why a lot of people use this and it doesn't really evaporate that well. So it stays there for a long, long time. So it still lubricates while it's there. So that's why a lot of people use it on their reels. I've actually used it on some of my reels, but I, I tend not to believe all the hype that, oh my gosh, WD-40 touched your line. Well, that line's ruined, rest in peace line. So 
we're gonna put it to the test here and I will be back in five days and we're gonna we're gonna throw some weights on these lines and see what they can handle so stay tuned all right guys so it's been five days and we're about to test these lines out so we've got our one that has been sitting in nothing but WD-40 we've got some that I sprayed that I've just haven't wiped off it's just been sitting here we'll see how that does and then we've got our control which has no WD-40 on it at all so we're gonna test and see if they can hold the weights all right guys so we're gonna start off with our mono the control this is the uh, 14 pound test mono and I've got scuba diving weights that we're gonna be using so I've got two pounds four pounds five pounds and a three pound the bucket actually accounts for about half a pound believe it or not so we're gonna start off in five pound increments work our way up to ten then we'll add that third uh, that three pound weight overall that's gonna give us about 14 pounds Then we're gonna just tick it up from there see what it takes to break this line let's do it here we go this is the first test five pounds on 14 pound mono no problem Twenty pounds. So for the fourteen pound mono, it did not break the knot. The knot actually, I just peeled it off here as I was talking to my wife, which is the camera girl. But twenty pounds is what broke the fourteen pound test. We're gonna see if these other ones hold up to that test, at least if they get to fourteen, which is what they're rated at. Like I said, we got twenty on this one, so we should be looking all right, I think, even if it weakens it a little bit. All right, so on this one, we're gonna do the ones that I sprayed with WD-40 on mono. This is 14 pound mono. I'm gonna start with 10 pounds. Actually, we're gonna start with 12 pounds because it should be able to handle that. If not, we know it's a complete, it's completely true that WD-40 does have an effect. Let's jump into the ones that are really soaked and see if it had a dramatic difference. So this time we've got the WD-40 soaked. It has not come out of WD-40 in five days. It's actually still got WD-40 on the line right there if you can see that. I mean, there's still WD-40 dripping off of it. So we're gonna start off with 10 pounds. Should be able to handle this, hopefully. Here's my take on at least mono. We're about to test fluoro in just a second. Mono, it WD-40 probably weakens it about two pounds, but you bought 14 pound tests and you're getting 18 pounds. I don't think the WD-40 is that big of a deal, guys. I really don't. I think that's just a wives tale that people have been perpetuating and if you get WD-40, you gotta change your line. By all means, change your line at least once a year, but WD-40 is not gonna cost you a, a, a big fish. I mean, if it's pulling on 14 pound test, you should work it a little bit and get it a little tired because 18 pounds, guys, just saying. Now we're moving on to our Berkeley Banish Fluorocarbon. This is 14 pound test. This is the control. Now we're gonna start off with five, the three, and then the half pound or three quarters of a pound for the bucket. So really about nine pounds. Let's see what we got. Nine pounds, no problem. And guys, that did not break on the knot. That is actually the line broke at 10 pounds. So we'll investigate that later. So we're gonna move on to the fluorocarbon that was sprayed with WD-40. Now, if it took 10 pounds to break our control, we're gonna definitely step this down some just in case there is some weakness. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in Four pounds, let's again say the bucket is a pound, so that's five pounds. We're gonna start off with seven pounds. That should be all right. Seven pounds is a three pound difference than what we had, and let's see if it makes it any weaker. Ooh. 
11 pounds. Thirteen pounds. Thirteen pounds. Every one of these are breaking right there. Not even on my tag. It's not a tag line. That's the actual line. I'll explain why in just a second. All right. This line has actually been soaked again for five days, just like the mono. This is fluoro. So we're going to start off with five. Same thing. That's going to be five plus two plus the one. Eight pounds. Here we go. 14 pound test. Berkeley Vanish. Soak for five days in WD-40. All right, so let's talk about the results for a second. I'm not so sure that the WD-40 had any effect. Maybe a little bit on the mono because we saw some pretty standard results. But we got some very mixed results on the fluorocarbon. And here's why. If you'll notice, every time they, the, there was a break, this is what it left. I don't know if y'all can see that very well. But just after the knot, now it's not my tagline, there's my tagline. I left a longer tagline so I'd know the difference. But just above the knot. Here's my thoughts. Fluorocarbon is extremely abrasive. You don't want it rubbing against each other and they actually tell you when you tie knots on it, you need to lick the line. You've gotta have some kind of lubricant, otherwise it's gonna it's gonna cause some little bitty microscopic tears in that line, making it much, much weaker. And I believe that's why we saw so many varying results with the fluorocarbon. But it would make sense with what we're seeing. The same thing could be said about the mono. The mono broke in the exact same place. Can y'all see that right above, right above the knot on both of them? So I don't necessarily think it was WD-40. It's the knot itself, whatever knot you tie on, if you don't have enough lubricant, which I actually licked the, the lines on these when I was tying them, just so I wouldn't have this happen. But that's gonna be the weakest point, is just before the knot. I mean, that's where the break was. It was never in the middle of the line that was soaking in the WD-40. It was always right there. Bottom line, I don't think WD-40 had any effect on this. So if you have WD-40, you clean your reels with it, it gets on your line, I think you're absolutely fine. I don't think it's gonna break. I, I don't think it's gonna weaken the line at any point. It doesn't seem like it absorbs into the line. I think you just need to be worried about your knots. I mean, the test on these things seems, I mean, it seems plausible. I've got a lot of questions now about the fluorocarbon because it was so varied. But it, mono well outperformed the fluorocarbon, um, which fluorocarbon has its pros and cons. Uh, the fish can't see it, but it is much more abrasive. Bottom line for this test, I think it's busted. I think the WD-40 has nothing to do with weakening line. I think if you're using it, continue using it. If it gets on your line, don't worry about it. Keep the line on. By all means, change your line once a year. You should always change your line at the first of the season just so you don't have some crazy line memory um, and just so the line doesn't get worn out because over time that stuff does break down. Anyway, that's gonna do it for today's video. If you liked what you saw, hit that thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Maybe you got some suggestions for other stuff that maybe things you heard from your granddad or your dad while you were fishing that you go, is that really true? I'd love to test that. I'll test it for you and I'll let you know, make it into a video. I'm thinking about doing some tests on knots um, to see which one is less abrasive and see if I can ever get up to what it says on this spool of 14 pounds of that vanish and what line companies kind of cheat on what they say is 12 pound test when it's really 10 pound test maybe do some stuff like that so as always subscribe to be fishing if you are not join the greatest family on youtube the be fishing family become a bff and guys i think it's going to do it for today's video i'll catch you next time In the moment.